Okay, so let's discuss perfect information. It's a bit tricky at first, but once you understand it, it's actually fairly straightforward. So remember, we're dealing with future outcomes, things that hasn't happened yet. So it's always uncertain. But in some cases, we can obtain or get information that will tell us what the outcomes will actually be. Remember, it doesn't change the outcomes. It will just tell us what they are. The probabilities stay the same. Now, just a note here in this module, I highlighted here, we assume that this perfect information is 100% accurate. But in real life, that might not be the case. So that's the assumption we make just in order to, to do the calculation. But everything we do is just an approximate to get to a better answer or better decision. It's not the actual or the accurate, most accurate answer. That's impossible because it's all future um, events. Okay, so perfect information. Now remember, drawn this little picture here. So this is the decision maker, and behind him, the solid line represents the past. So that's it, because it's already happened. He's got the information. He's looking towards the future. That's dotted line. And that's uncertain. So if you think of that oil company that drills for oil, they might know how much they found in the past, drilling in certain places, and that's where the probabilities come from, but he doesn't know what he's going to get when he drills in future. But what they can do is they could pay someone that could go out and scan the ocean floor with an x-ray, so maybe it's technology that they have, to see what the quantities of oil are at specific places. So they scan a specific spot where they intend to drill and they find, find that it's a small quantity of oil. Now remember they don't change the quantity of oil they'll find. They don't put the oil under the ocean floor. This exploration or this scanning company or the, the research company only goes out and scan the floor, something that this decision maker cannot do. And then they come back and say we found a small quantity of oil. Then the decision maker can decide what they want to do with this information. So if you think back to our example here, here's that. So if they find a small quantity of oil, this research company, what will the decision maker do? Well, if they know it's small, they still don't know whether there's going to be a recession or a recovery. That's still uncertain. So the outcomes now is either a loss of 100,000 Rand or a loss of 80,000 Rand. So only these two outcomes are relevant because the survey company, the one that did the x-rays, for which we probably have to pay, obviously, they came back and said it's a small quantity of oil. Now we know it's either 100,000 loss or 80,000 loss. Now what would any rational decision maker do with that information? Well, they know it's going to be a loss because it's either 100 or 80,000 red loss. So the expected value now is 50% chance of 100,000 loss, 50% chance of 80,000 loss, so basically expected value of a 90,000 loss. So would anyone go for that if they knew they are going to make a loss? No. So that's what I did here. I calculated the expected value. That is basically assuming that we have a small quantity of oil and assuming we don't know what the recovery or the recessions or what the economy is going to do. That gives us a new expected value of 90,000. So we basically ignore the moderate and large quantities of oil because we know now there's a small quantity. Based on the expected value of 90,000 rand loss, we won't drill for oil. So that means whenever we find that there's a small quantity of oil from the survey company, then we won't drill for oil and our expected value changes to zero. So if we don't make a loss, we don't make a profit. What if the survey company comes back, they scan the ocean floor where we want to drill, and they say there's a moderate quantity of oil. So now we only look at this middle section. We still don't know whether there's a recession, which is 50% likely, or a recovery, which is 50% likely. So we know the outcome's going to be either a 40,000 loss or a 20,000 rand profit. The expected value of a 40,000 rand loss, which is 50% likely, and a 20,000 rand profit, which is 50% likely, is 10,000 negative expected value. So again, if the survey company comes back and says there's a moderate quantity of oil, 
we know the expected value is 10,000 rand loss. So we say no, don't draw. So we change our expected values for a moderate quantity of oil to zero because we won't do it. You might say, but what about this positive 20,000 rand? Don't we want to go for that? But remember, we don't know whether there's going to be a recession or a recovery. It's 50 50. So we have to use the expected values to make a decision. So basically, we only look at the information we have. And if they say there's a moderate quantity of oil, we don't know what the economy is going to do. Expected value is 10,000. And lastly, what if they come back? Great news. There's a large quantity of oil. I'll highlight the relevant information. Still don't know whether there's a recession, but if there's a recession, we're going to make a profit of 180,000 rand. If there's a recovery, even better, 400,000 rand. The expected value then, as a result, is 290,000 rand, which is the weighted average of the large quantity of oil with the recession and the large quantity of oil with the recovery. So the 180 and the 400 weighted 50 50 each. So that's 290,000 rand. Based on that, we say yes, we'll draw it. So in this column, and that's the trick, we take the possible outcome of 180,000 rand, multiply it by the joint probability, and get 18,000, and we do the same for the 400,000, and we add it up. We actually did do the same here, but we don't have to write it down, because no, the outcome would have been changed to zero for small and for moderate quantities of oil. Why? Because we won't drill for oil, so we won't make a loss, at, loss and don't make a profit. So the expected value will just be zero. Because it would be the outcome of zero, of doing nothing, multiplied by the joint probabilities. Remember, we still have to multiply by these joint probabilities, because the survey company only gave us information of how much oil are under the ocean floor. They didn't change the probabilities of what they will find. And that's the key here. Remember, the survey company is contracted here, in the present time. They also don't know what is under the ocean floor. So we say, yes, we want your services, we will pay you for it, go out and scan the ocean floor and come back and tell us is it small, medium or large quantity of oil. So they don't know what they're going to find. So the probabilities of 50, 30 and 20% applies to them as well, to the results. Once we paid them, they go out, they scan the ocean floor and then they come back and say, wait, it's a small quantity of oil. That 50% chance of a small quantity of oil is still applicable. So, in other words, every 10 times they go out and scan the ocean floor, five times they'll come back and say it's a small quantity of oil. The only thing that changes is our outcome, what we do with that information, which will affect our, our profit we make and that will affect our expected value. So, now the big question is. If perfect information does not change the, the outcomes, it doesn't affect the outcomes, it doesn't change the probabilities of what they'll find, how does it have a value? Well, it has a value because it changes our behavior, it changes what we do, it changes, it, it, it stops us from making decisions where we expect a loss. You can see that from this information here. Without perfect information, we have expected value of 10,000 Rand. So you can see here, here's the link to the original um, video on that example, the class example. With perfect information, now because we avoid making losses or expected losses, our expected value changes to 58,000. So without perfect information, 10,000 Rand. With perfect information, 58,000 Rand expected value. So how much would you be willing to pay for an additional value of 48,000 Rand? Well, anything less than 48,000 Rand. So the value of the perfect information is the difference between the expected value with perfect information and the expected value without perfect information. So in other words, you'll be willing to pay for that information up to 48,000 Rand. Anything more than that will be wasting money because you won't get the benefit. Now remember again, this only applies if you repeat the project over and over again. 